Jet Set Radio Future Multiplayer, or JSRFMP for short, is a Jet Set Radio fan game based on the multiplayer mode from Jet Set Radio Future, created by the user Screen Racer. This isn't a port of Jet Set Radio Future or a mod, this is a remake built from the ground up, its own standalone game. This game has been around for quite a while now, but I've only gotten the chance to play it finally in February of this year. So, how is the game? Is it any fun? Uh, it's complicated. Let me explain. Before we get into the actual game itself, let's quickly talk about Jet Set Radio Future's multiplayer mode. It's a pretty standard multiplayer mode where you can play with up to four players in a split screen setting. You had racing, a death ball game, flag battles, seeing who can spray the most graffiti in a set of time, and tagger's tag where whoever sprays the back of their opponent until their health goes down wins. The interesting thing about it is that they actually have exclusive levels for the multiplayer mode. The secondary Rokaku Expo Stadium, which is actually a pretty cool level, it looks like it would have taken place in the Shibuya area if it was implemented in the main game. Then there's the Tokyo Underground Sewage Facility Regulatory District, wow that is a mouthful, which shows more of the outside of the sewers compared to the bottom point of the sewage facility. The layout is a little similar, but it feels like this could have been a part of the sewage area. Flag Battles, Graffiti Wars, and Tiger's Tag actually have completely new stages that are more like arenas. There's Showa Park, which takes place in Hokage Street, Raiden Park, which takes place in Rokaku Dai Heights, and Suzura Park, which takes place in 99th Street. These arena-like levels definitely work the best for these modes. For some reason, Dogenzaka Hill isn't an option to race it, and 99th Street and Hikake Street aren't available for flag battles, even though they were available to play in the main game. I guess it was because of time constraints, which I suppose isn't a big deal. So, how do you take a standard multiplayer mode and turn it into a full-fledged game? Well, we now have a bunch of new modes and you can also do PvP lobbies with other players and play online. There's tons of options in this game, but the main one I want to start with is free play mode, which is essentially where you'll spend most of your time in this game. Free mode is, well, just at Radio Future's main game. Its world has been rebuilt and ported and brought into this game. I gotta start by saying that this game is actually kinda nice to look at. This is something I would kinda like to see from a Jet Set Radio Future HD re-release, if we ever get it of course. Widescreen support, running at a mostly consistent 60 FPS. The environments are more dynamic, especially when you knock down stuff. The models do look a little weird though, and unfortunately they lose the expressions that you see in the base game. In any case, it does make me happy to see this game being played at a high resolution. Really just makes me wish we could have something like this in the future. So in free play mode, this is where you're going to be unlocking most of the characters. How you unlock them is very similar to how you unlock the post game characters in the future. In each area, you are given street challenges to complete. Every time you clear each challenge, you get a graffiti soul. Once you collect every graffiti soul, you unlock that character for use. No test run challenges needed this time. Some characters have different ways of being unlocked, like when you meet Rift, you meet her like you do in the actual game, but you actually play a game of hide and seek where you look all around where Papu die heights for her. Or you'll do something like destroying a bunch of noise tanks similar to the chapter in the future, or you're gonna race Soda in Highway Zero. I appreciate that the game tried to keep things fresh with very mixed reception I feel. We're gonna get to that eventually. I wanted to talk about the controls and the physics of this game. <sighs> now since this game is built from the ground up, I wouldn't expect this to have the same movement and physics as Just Set Radio Future. My overall feelings of the controls, I'm gonna be honest here, I don't like it. As someone who's played Future so many times for almost two decades now, I can instantly feel the differences in the physics and how they tried their best to emulate the feeling of Future. And it didn't work out very well. The controls are very loose. When you turn your character, they instantly start veering to the left and veering to the right. It's so hard to keep a straight line when you're on the ground. In the air, I actually kind of like it having more air control when you're turning. It can make for a lot of interesting turns while you're jumping off stuff. 
And speaking of jumping off stuff, let's talk about how you're going airborne and when you're using boost dash. In future, when you boost and then jump, you get a good amount of air time to make jumps, but your character has a decent amount of weight to it, where it doesn't feel like that you're just flying in the air. In MP, it's a different story. Characters feel much more like lightweights. When you're jumping off rails, bellboards, and walls, your characters just go soaring in the air, which is a little unnatural with the loose physics, and you're just going to be flying over a lot of stuff, especially like when you're trying to wall ride, you're going to fly over the billboards, and it's super unnatural. But when you're boosting, you don't really gain a lot of speed or height when you're jumping. To give an example here in Dogenzaka Hill, when you grind up to these platforms, you could do a boost dash jump by the end of the first platform and completely skip over to the third platform. However, in MP, when you boost dash jump, characters feel too heavy and they don't gain as much air time as they do in future. So for the most part, you're going to be completely missing that third platform by just a little bit. Combine that with the same problems of sometimes latching on rail and telephone poles and you'll go completely the wrong way that you intended. And even the wall riding issue where you hit a wall ride the wrong way and it will lock your controls and you wouldn't be able to jump. These issues that were present in future and now still present in MP with the changes that it has, it makes everything feel even more off. Even the herky jerky camera angles can be a bit of a headache inducing thing when switching from rail to rail. I'm going to be honest and say that the OG game even has better controls than this. You know what MP's controls reminds me of and I can't believe I'm saying this, Sonic 06. Sonic 06 has that same similar loose controls when you're controlling left and right on the ground and Sonic would just start veering left and right so fast and it's even like that in the air. It felt unnatural and it felt weird. and. MP gives me that same feeling, and if your controls are reminding me of Sonic 06, that's a red flag. All the familiar locations are here. Dokenzaka, Subuya Terminal, Chuo Street, Hikake Street, Rokakodai Heights and the sewers, but you can't exactly explore all of the sewers for some reason. Kibugalka is here, the Fortified Residential Zone is here, 99th Street is still there, but it has no slowdowns, which is an A+. Highway Zero is there, but the Sky Dinosaurian Square and the Skyscraper District have been completely omitted. We do have some new stages though, mostly Shinjuku Street. It's a big open area that has a train station with a statue in the middle with two unfinished construction sites on the side. The train station itself circles around the entire map. This location implies that this is where the headquarters of the Rokaku building is, which I think is a very cool thing to add to the lore. You can have custom stuff in the garage too, by changing the telephone wire colors, having a flag, a pool, a trophy case. You can even upgrade Pot's doghouse. You can even play with Pot's. You can throw the ball around and play fetch. It's adorable. These are the usual areas you know from Just Set Radio Future, and everything is pretty much intact from the vehicles, the NPCs, and the animals. All the usual characters are here. The GGs, the rivals, with the immortals being missing for some reason. Goji and his demon form Akumu. We got some new characters like a future version of Coin from the OG game, a creator's OC. You can play an NPC, a Rokaku cop, and even as Hayashi himself, which is hilariously freaky to see. You can even play the Rhino Head dancers from the OG game? I don't know how to feel about it, but it is fascinating to watch. You can change the color of characters' clothing along with their skate trails. So I mean, if you want a character to have golf outs, then I mean the option is there. You can unlock some costumes for the characters, but not everyone has a unique costume. You could get a classic costume like OG Jesse Radio's Mew, or you could unlock something like a uh, Beast hey, Summer you. costume. Yeah, this is terrible. And unlocking these costumes are pretty annoying, but. We'll get to that in a little bit. Let's talk about the other game modes that this game offers. So besides the free play mode, we do have the other modes like flag battles, taggers tag, and graffiti wars. They also added a new mode, which is more like a hot potato type game where you throw a bomb around and there's a game where you have to race up to the top before the water drowns you. It's actually a pretty cool mode. 
They even added the races from the OG game where you race to tap the graffiti first. Besides the usual arena stages that were already in the main Jet Set Radio future, they even added some completely new ones which give us a lot more options. You can do races, Death Ball is not there so I mean, that's a plus. It has the noise tank invasion which is pretty boring, if you played it in the future then nothing has really changed here. But there is one particular mode that I want to talk about. And I say that this is the worst part of Just Set Radio Future multiplayer. Horde mode. So you know how in Just Set Radio Future where you're put into a section where you had to defeat the Rokaku goons and areas are blocked off by an electric fence? That's pretty much what this entire mode is. You could do up to 30 hordes and you can choose to either fight in Shibuya Terminal, Chuo Street, 99th Street, or Shinjuku to fight them. You got your usual Rokaku goons that you knock down easily, you got the armored cops, you have the golden rhino dudes with guns as well as the bear suit guys, but it doesn't stop there. We have a new challenger, the bomb bot. The moment they detect you, they'll start chasing you after you and they are on a timer until they explode. This could either be good for you if you lure them into a crowd of cops and blow them up easily to destroy a horde, or bad for you because if you collide with it, you're taking a lot of damage. There's also some points where tanks and the fighter planes will start coming after you. Every 5th turn interval, there will be a sub boss to fight in the horde. You got Captain Hayashi and the Pyromaniac. Captain Onishima actually makes an appearance, even Akumu and his demons are sub bosses. Usually it doesn't matter what character you pick to do this, but in this game, some characters have edge over others. Characters like Combo, Soda, and Poison Jam have high strength stats which allows them to break the armor of the armor cops without boosting into them. That's definitely a benefit, but it will come at a cost of having low graffiti stat or something, which will take longer to get rid of the cops. Now, let me explain why this is definitively the worst mode in this entire game. I absolutely detest horde mode. In future, they were like pacebreakers. They either appeared at the beginning, middle, or end of the chapter to thwart your progression. While they were pathetically easy, they are spread out well to be a small little distraction, so there, it worked. When it's turned into this arena-like mode where combat is a thing that doesn't exist along with a pretty lackluster enemy variety, it gets very boring very fast. It's not a fun gameplay loop. Then let's talk about those said sub bosses. Hayashi's trigger finger is so accurate that his bullets will track you and delete your health bar so quickly. Onishima is even worse because he has a temporary power up mode and when he shoots you, he can knock you down. He can then arrest you to end the horde battle, even if you have tons of health. I haven't even brought this up yet, but one of my least favorite things about this game is that when you get hit by something, you get ragdolled. It's funny when you're just messing around in a free play mode, but in horde mode, it will be the bane of your existence. Getting knocked down in horde mode is the worst. To bring up Onishima again, he'll put you in a ragdoll state when you get shot and it takes much longer to recover because this game doesn't have a normal knockdown animation. So he will catch you or you will get swarmed by the Rokaku goons and it's game over. The power maniac is like the least annoying, but she becomes obnoxious with the range of her flamethrower being ginormous. It's so hard to knock her down sometimes. Akumu is such a waste of time. Not only do you have to kill him, but you have to kill all of his demons as well, and it just drags on for longer than it should. If you want to unlock Goji and Akumu, you have to complete an entire 30 wave horde. And if you want to unlock those legend skins that some playable characters have, you not only have to get a jet rank in the races, you have to get a jet rank in jet graffiti, but you also have to do a 30 wave horde mode with those characters. Huh? Are you trolling little bro? If you think I'm going to be doing all that grinding for cosmetics, that will get boring very fast, but it's also blatantly not fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm flushing this game. If you have friends, horde mode gets pretty trivial and you'll breeze through it with your buddies but doing it single player is not worth it. Is it possible? Yes, it is. Is it fun? Hell no. 
Jet Set Radio Future Multiplayer is complicated. As a fan game, I think it's very impressive, especially approaching an open game like Future and remaking it from the ground up with just one person. I admire them for their hard work. For a lot of Jet Set Radio fans, this game is a fun way to bond with each other. Expanding this game into a PvP multiplayer game, adding new modes and stages, exploring all the old areas from Future with friends, that's cool. The customization options you could do with the characters is also really cool. This game has a number of good ideas in it. But then, actually playing it is not fun for me. With the wonky floaty physics and loose controls, the boring gameplay loop when it comes to unlocking stuff, and the straight up unfun that is horde mode. Just that Radio Future multiplayer is overall just not the game for me, and it's something I haven't gone back to since getting footage for this video. If you're a fan of Just That Radio, I do at least you recommend giving this game a look. Don't see this as some sort of alternative for Just That Radio in Future, because it's not. They are completely different games. If you want to play Just That Radio Future, Play Jet Set Radio Future, whether you still have it on your OG Xbox or you're playing it from your 360 or PC. MP is not the way to get the Jet Set Radio Future experience. And I'm going to be honest, I'm just not a fan of this game. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and comment below what you thought about it. And if you're interested in me doing more Just That Radio related content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell to get notified when I upload my next video. In the description on both of my Twitters, that's where I'm most socially active in. So if you're interested in following me there, please do so. Anyways, thank you all for watching and take care.